So this is called Fire. I'm going to read the stage directions, and as we just said, the spoken word part. <coughs> Sarah, in her early 20s, stands in the back stock room of a retail clothing store. There are boxes of clothes around her. It is night. She is standing with a cigarette in her mouth and holding a Zippo lighter. She doesn't light the cigarette, looks at her lighter. <coughs> This morning my boss said to me that to be the best employee that I could be, I should smile more, smile more at the customers. Like this. And she looked at the t-shirt I just laid out, and she said I really needed to think more about my folding, folding technique. Like the world depends on military grade folds. Oh. And also I'm too eager to get away at the end of my shift every day. She was wearing those skinny jeans we sell. They just went on sale, now they're cheap as hell. Two fifty, two fifty with my discount. It cost me more to ride the bus to work. I usually get a ride, but Matt was being a jerk, feeling lazy, lazy, he said. I hate the bus, and he knows it. I need to get my own car. Or a new boyfriend. Matt always says, I'm always complaining. If I hate my job so much, well, why don't I just quit? Matt's one to talk, he hates his job as much as me, and I just want to share more, is that not what he's there for? One of many things Matt doesn't seem to get. My feet hurt. These are our shoes, but they seriously suck, but they go with my skirt. We got a new shipment of jeans today. And guess who had the job of putting them away? They're red now, not orange. Red's the new orange. Thank God, no more orange. I was so sick of orange. Retail sucks. And a girl that went to my high school came in when I was working one day. She was dressed in a suit, like a nice one with heels. She was probably studying to be a lawyer or something, or is a lawyer or something. I hid in the back. There was no way I was going to let her see me working here. She plays with the lighter. Do you know where Bangladesh is? Exactly? I didn't. I mean, I had an idea, vaguely, but not really. I had to Google it when it was all over the news. That fire was nuts in the sweatshop. Did you hear the managers padlock the doors when the alarm went off? They told them there was no fire and ordered them to keep working. My manager is bad, but she wouldn't do that. Of course, I don't work in a sweatshop. Though sometimes it feels like it on Boxing Day or something. Did you see that hilarious Simpsons opening when they're in a sweatshop? <laughs> so funny. There were piles of yarn and fabric all over the place. That's what caught fire. There were supposed to be like 30 fire extinguishers and there were only two. And no one used them because nobody knew how. But I doubt anyone here knows how to use one. I sure don't. And so crazy, there was a picture of one of our shirts, all charred and burned, but I recognized the blue polka dot pattern. It was one of our peasant tees. You could see the label in the picture. Small world. And then the other day, the day after the fire, a customer came up to me and asked if I felt guilty. I said, what? The fire, the fire in Bangladesh. But I just work here. I don't even know where Bangladesh is. I looked it up after that. 
And you're one to talk. You're the one who's shopping here. Am I guilty? Yeah, I guess, but, well, sort of, I mean, yes, but what am I supposed to do? If they didn't have that job, they'd be prostitutes because there's no other options there. So it's a good thing, actually. Not the fire, the sweatshops. And I know they only make like 17, 17 cents an hour, but whatever, their rent is like eight bucks. So anyway. After my boss bitches me out a while, she decides it should be me who deals with the pile of boxes, boxes that just came in. And there aren't any speakers to play music back here. So it's just this silent void of a room. It's always cold, too. We all hate getting stuck back here. It's like going in an isolation cell. I'm stacking the jeans, putting them back on the rack to take out to the showroom, and then I'm going through each of the pockets to remove the tags when I find this. Just a scrap of paper, but it was super bizarre. I mean, I've gone through thousands of pockets since I've started working here. I almost just threw it out, but it was, it was folded, so I unfolded it. She reads from the letter. My name is Reshma, and I'm 19 years old. I live in Dhaka, in the factory where jeans are made and sold. I've worked here for four months away from mom and dad. My sister, my nana, and the naughty little kitty that I had. My friends and I made these jeans for you. So Kina made the pockets, and Sumi sewed the zipper. I cut the threads like I always do. We hope that you will like them. I think we're lucky to have the jobs we do. I hope you think of Sumi, Sukina, and me who made these jeans for you. She looks up from the letter. I wonder if her smells like mine does, or if her nana makes her soup and smokes while she does dishes, looking out the window. I unpacked. 20 boxes from size 0 to 16 and every pair was flawless not a thread was loose Reshma snipped them clean she and Sumi and Sukina red skinny jeans from a box. A bunch of teens came in today and went crazy over them. They all tried them on, like six or seven girls parading around the dressing room in these jeans. So cute! They kept saying to each other and giggling. They each bought a pair. One girl actually bought two pairs. She was like, why not? They're only 16 bucks. With my discount, I can get them for six. 
She looks at her lighter, looks at the boxes around her, end. <laughs>